Hello everyone, and as always, welcome to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. Now today we're going to continue on with War in the Pacific, as we do on every Friday um, at 10 a.m. Pacific time, so always stop by if you want to watch this. Uh, now... I am going to continue on with the turn five setup. On Wednesday, we were setting up China. We got about half, well, maybe not even halfway through China, talking about the setup, talking about the things that we're doing in the Japanese-Chinese conflict. And uh, I've gotten some feedback that maybe people are starting to fall behind a little bit. In these early turns, there is a lot of work to do. Uh, I guess we could call that fun work, right? It's uh, it's very interesting to me. I like to go around the map and look at all the units. But early on especially, you know, we're just now in turn five having task forces get to the, their original destinations. We're going to have to start thinking about where we want them to go next. Do we want them to keep making that same initial run? Uh, we also have things that are coming under threat, whether that be in the Philippines or in Malaya, that we have to think about. Uh, and so it's not a quick turn over turn resolution uh, or getting to the turn resolution phase. The setup really takes some time, takes some thought. So I thought we would continue on, and then we will resolve this turn on the live stream Sunday that we always do Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific as well. And so we're going to continue on here in China. Now, a few things. Uh, one is I did a lot of work uh, since the last live stream to optimize uh, various video settings and whatnot on both Twitch and YouTube. Uh, I use uh, Streamlabs OBS Prime, uh, and so through that you can help try to you know optimize the video. I have done that to you know some people had said that their stream or what they're seeing, the video they're seeing, isn't always at 720p. I've done everything possible to get that video quality up there because in this game I know that uh, you need to read, you need to see the bases that we're on and the units that we're uh, giving orders to. Uh, you know, it's one thing to listen, it's a whole other thing to be able to see exactly what we're doing. And so this, this thing is optimized as much as you could optimize it. Uh, and hopefully it looks good for you guys and uh, it makes for a more enjoyable watch. Uh, so anyway, let's get started. Let's jump in. I'm going to bring up my spreadsheet and bring up my game. There we go. And get back to looking at our Chinese setup. Now, last time we had, you know, moved some things around here around Ai Cheng, which we are marching to. The Japanese have abandoned Ai Cheng. Uh, which isn't always normal. Usually uh, in the Chinese theater, they will try to hold on to the uh, territory that they've already taken. And so uh, that, that was an interesting development. That's fine. We've got uh, some units going there. Because of that, we're backing off some units and moving them back. Uh, and so we'll continue... Uh, looking at that you know the chi or i'm sorry the japanese may be kind of regrouping they've got a lot of troops just to the east of ai chang it's kind of southeast down here at hankow they may you know make a play for that again although we have a lot of core uh strength at ai chang or we will when our units get there and so you know question whether they could even take that. But even if they do, we could then fall back across the river, which is just to the southwest of Ai Cheng. Uh, that is a very defensible position. Uh, and then even further on, we get to Chengta, or Chengta, if you prefer. Um, and that is incredibly uh, set up for a defensive position. Uh, that being said, the Japanese have a lot of quality troops in this theater, and we're just trying to hang on the best that we can. Uh, also there at Ai Cheng, assuming we don't come under pressure for maybe the first month of the war in December, we may start thinking about going down that highway to Hankow uh, and actually you know, getting on the offense a little bit. Uh, they're, they're out here on an island a bit, uh, and, you know, there's a lot of rivers. I think that's the Yangtze. Um, although, well, I know that one 
One is the Yellow River, the other is the Yangtze. I believe that's the Yangtze. Um, anyway, the point being is they're kind of out here stretched a bit in the central part of uh, China. Uh, we could maybe use that to our advantage, even get a little encirclement going on, uh, because, of course, to the north of all of these Japanese troops, we have a lot of manpower. And we do to the south as well. And so being able to maybe cut off some of these strong Japanese units uh, here in the center of the map may be possible. Um, Bayard says we're at 1080p. All right, Bayard. I, I, honestly, I, I did that for you. Uh, I really looked into those video uh, different setups and whatnot to try to optimize it as much as possible so hopefully going forward it will always look good now i had mentioned on a previous live stream i am with spectrum cable out here in california and that may be one of the worst uh companies to ever come into existence so you know we have some history let's put it that way uh but i'm glad it looks good uh let's bring up my spreadsheet and we'll continue on now the last time that i was with you I, anyway, uh, are, I'm on row 976 of the spreadsheet. Now, yours might be a little bit different. I did delete all the Soviet Union units, but I don't think that uh, there were any Soviet units before we got to China. So that should correspond a little bit with your, um, your spreadsheet. If it doesn't, or you've done other things with your spreadsheet, I'm still moving through the Chinese units that are not at bases. Okay, so these are kind of the the, the free, independent, uh, you know, cores that are moving around um, that are not currently at bases. I'm at the 58th Chinese core, part A, because we have actually divided the 58th Chinese core into A, B, and C. Okay, and uh, on the map we're at 84.52, so that will be about five clicks south here, and there is 84.52. And at 84.52, we're going to look at the, as I said, 58th Chinese core, and there we go, we see part A of that core. Um, and we should, probably should have part B of that core here as well, and we do. Uh, and so our, our initial orders were divide that unit and sit still uh, with these two parts. And we have done that. Now we are just to the southwest of Wu Chang, where the Japanese have a bright red bunch of units. Uh, we're showing three units uh, given our detection level. Uh, we're, we're, our intelligence is telling us there are three there, could be, could not be, uh, you know, we'll see. Three units could really be decent strength. We now have two broken up uh, portions of a core, uh, so we're not really sitting there with much strength. But it does, you know, it does allow us to kind of have every single hex to the south of them filled. Now the part C of that 58th Chinese Corps, we had marched to 8552. Uh, and so let's go look. This should be the C portion. And it is, so it's sitting there as well. Now I'm going to leave these green. The reason I'm going to do that is, you know, they're not sitting at a base. They're not at a terribly well-positioned defensive sit setting. And so, you know, if the Japanese start to come south uh, from Wucheng or come west from this base that's uh, right here, which is Kuikang, if they start to come west, uh, northwest potentially, we'll have to kind of move these units around, maybe reform that 58th core. Uh, so I'm going to leave that green and come and try to look at it every time I can. Uh, the next one's down then, we go to 8454, which should probably be right here, and I believe it is. And this is the 30th Group Army Headquarters that we have here. It's a core headquarters. Uh, and then we have... Um, the 79th Chinese Corps? Well, let's see, that's the 72nd and the 78th, no. Oh, that's right, it is the 78th, sorry. My other computer's a little uh, further away. And, uh, you know, I'm getting old, folks, uh, the eyesight's going. No, not really, I just, 
That looked like 79th, but it's actually 78th. So the 78th Chinese Corps is sitting here. Our uh, orders originally here, and now we've got the 72nd, which must have marched uh, from somewhere else, and we'll get to it here in a minute. Uh, but our orders for the 78th and the 30th Group Army, I believe the 78th is part of the 30, 30th Group Army, and it is, are to sit still. And this is one of the places, this hex, 8454, if you find it on your map, this is one of the places... Uh... <laughs> yeah, P. Warner, uh, for sure, on Comcast. Uh, he was saying that Comcast could give... Uh, spectrum or run for its money i actually uh, moved to california from chicago so i'm very very familiar with comcast as comcast's shitty service as well um yes those those two companies uh i'd almost wish they would nationalize them although they're they're almost like nationalized co companies right no customer service no uh seemingly anyone alive there that can get anything done so, yes, for sure. Um, anyway, I was saying, oh, this hex, 8454, I oftentimes like to retreat most of my Chinese forces here in the southeast to 8454 here, and then to a little, a little bit to the southwest, uh, which is 8255. These are on major highways. They uh, are across rivers, and the Japanese don't really have a good spot to attack them from without coming across the river. Um, hey, Shaky, what's going on? How are you? Uh, and so I like to oftentimes take these units in the southeast and move them to these two locations to kind of protect Changsha which is you've got to protect that with, with your life. Uh, and so oftentimes I will retreat things back here. Now this playthrough, I'm playing a little bit differently. I'm following Cole a little more closely. Uh, and so a lot of these units down here to the southeast, we've left in place. Uh, we're going to kind of you know turtle up there and make the Japanese at least, at the very least, take a lot of losses to take Wen Chao, uh, for instance, and Chusen, and so I'm not playing it quite the same, uh, but these units are at a good defensive location. Like I said, they're on this major highway, so we'll just go look at them very quickly. We'll make sure they're in combat mode, that nobody marched over here, so they are in combat mode. Uh, they are uh, preparing for Changsha, which is probably smart, uh, because if bad things start to happen here, we will probably retreat back to Changsha with them. Oh, that reminds me, one thing I need to do is go up here and make sure we are in combat mode for those units uh, that we did split apart, or the one core that we split apart. I just want to make sure they're all in combat mode. As you uh, progress here through China and we get to the end, you should really go look at your ground units and filter just for Chinese units and really take a close look that things that are where they are supposed to be are in combat mode. You don't do not want to, and Bayard and I talked about this last time, you do not want to get those caught um, with uh, in move mode. So you definitely want to go check that out. All right, so these units are where they need to be at 8454. And I am going to go ahead and turn those orange uh, because they really should not be moving unless they get directly attacked. Uh, they would then almost certainly fall back towards Changsha. So we should be in good shape uh, there. Now 8455, let's see if we can find that. It's right here. That hex, we've got the third new Chinese core. Okay, there it is. The third new Chinese core. And we've said no action here. Okay, well, let's look at this for a second. Uh, this has got kind of a different name, this third new Chinese core. Uh, and that's because it is directly uh, attached to the third war area. This is analogous to in war in the east when you take a core, well, in that case, you're taking a division and uh, attaching it to an army headquarters. Here we've taken a core, and instead of um, attaching it to a core headquarters, we're attaching it directly to the war area, which is analogous to an army. Uh, so uh, an army headquarters, I should say. 
Hey, Shaky, thanks for uh, subscribing. You're my first one, first subscriber on Twitch, so I do appreciate that, and you'll always be number one in my heart. Uh, thank No, again, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Um, so, okay, so this third new Chinese core is just going to sit here. Uh, it is in kind of a strange position. We're just to the south here of what looks to be a major Japanese force at Nanchang. Uh, we've got enemy units listed as four. And so, you know, question, again, normally I would probably retreat these guys back. Now, what they are doing here is really covering the flank of all of these units to the southeast because if the Japanese do move south they can start to cut off all of these units and uh, that would not be good if we get uh, you know if they if they sort of envelop us down here get around us uh, so we'll have to really monitor this uh, and I, for that reason on my spreadsheet I'm gonna keep that green I would like to come look at that situation pretty much every turn. And as I say, the real reason being is it's guarding this major highway where our troops would try to retreat back out of this southeastern corridor here. And uh, we want to hold that. Now we have some other troops just to the southeast of them that could maybe come help. We'll go look at that as we move on. Um, at 8456, that's the 49th Chinese Corps. Now, we will come back to this uh, 21st Chinese Corps that's also in the hex I was just talking about. Uh, they came from somewhere else, so they'll be a little bit further down the spreadsheet, I believe. Uh, the 49th, I think, is right here. This is the unit I was just discussing that is... Uh, it's one hex south, so 46 miles south uh, of that location. That is kind of serving the same purpose. You know, I guess if those original troops to the north of them in the hex just north of them start to get beaten back, uh, we still have this other highway that we're protecting. Now, we have given those orders to go to 85.56. Wait a minute. Yeah, so they were at 84.55. We've told them, um, no, they were at 84.56. We've told them to go to 85.56, and they have arrived. And so we want to get them out of move mode, turn them to combat mode. Now, their future objective is set to Pucheng. Uh, okay, um, that seems interesting. Where exactly? Let's go find Pucheng really fast. I don't have that one on my Chinese Rolodex. So there we go. Let's go find Pu Cheng. And hopefully we hold it. Yes, we do. There we go. There is Pu Cheng. Oh, okay. So it's one of these bases that's not been built up. All right. And so it's, um, it's you know, two to the north and west of what we're listing it as, as its objective, uh, we may look to change that and maybe change it down here to Quezon, uh, because, uh, or Quezon, I probably shouldn't say Quezon, people will think it's in Vietnam, uh, Quezon, or Cousin, maybe. Uh, so that would be to its west if it needed to retreat back. But right now it looks like we're planning, if they were to get attacked and driven back, that they will come and uh, rejoin this pocket that we have here. Again, this is kind of a delicate situation in the southeast, uh, but they are where they need to be. However, I'm going to keep them green. That's kind of a fluid situation. Uh, now we've moved over uh, one column uh, on the map. So we're over to 85, and so we're going to move all the way back up here north, and we're going to go to 8540, and let's get close, come on, 8540, there we go. So at 8540, we did have the 16th Chinese Corps, now we've told them, let's make sure, yeah, that's the 16th Chinese Corps, we have told them to move to Cyan. All right, uh, 16th Chinese Corps. They're part of the 4th Group Army. Um, let's, we'll go look for that in a minute. We've got their objective as uh, Cyan. 
uh, their future object or their March objective as cyan, uh, their future objective as cyan. So that all looks good. Is the fourth group army down here? Let's go see. Nope, that's the 34th group army. That must be. Nope, that's the Red Chinese Army, which is marching to Yan'an. Uh, and so Mao Zedong is making his way to Yan'an. Well, the 4th Group Army must be back over here somewhere. I'm not going to waste our time searching for them. These guys are going where they should be going. Uh, we are going to... We'll keep them green, because when they get to Cyan, we'll have to turn them into combat mode. And we want to make sure that we remember to do that. Um, the next group is at 8542, which would probably be right here. No, that's 8443. And there is 8642. So they were originally at 8542. This is the fourth group army. Uh, they are m marching to Luoyang. Okay, so this must be them. And indeed it is. It is the fourth group army, along with the 96th. Uh, Chinese Corps should be along here somewhere. Maybe they got a little ahead of us. Sure enough, there they are. All these two are both going to Luoyang. We've talked a little bit about Luoyang, but Luoyang and here Chengchou are incredibly important, of course. They are across this river. That's what's really holding back the Japanese from advancing. Uh, now, Luoyang is not directly on the railroad, but it's protecting the flank of Changchao here. Uh, Changchao may be the most important Chinese uh, location after, you know, Changsha, or Changsha, I should say. So Changchao, incredibly important. Because of that, we also really build up Luoyang here, because that's the two ways for the Japanese to really get across the river. Here is a third hex just south of Changchao, where they could also get across the river. Uh, but we'll have to monitor that uh, situation uh, very closely. Um... Okay, so those units are going where they should be. We'll have to keep them green until they arrive so that we remember to turn them to combat mode. So again, that is the 47th Chinese Corps, the 96th uh, Chinese Corps. They're all heading where, they, or they're both heading where they should be, heading to Luoyang. Uh, the next one down is the second group army. That's at 85, or it was at 8547. So let's get out here on the map. 85, 84, 85, 47. There we are. And that indeed is the second group army. Uh, that second group army we've said no action to. And that kind of lines up with what we had done earlier uh, in the previous episode is, uh, unlike Cole, I'm having the 55th Chinese Corps and the 77th Chinese Corps march over here and join them. Um, the reason being, so Cole's spreadsheet said this unit, the second group army, needs to stay right here in this hex. That's all good. Uh, I think, now I can't remember if it was the 30th Chinese or it was these units that were supposed to go up here to Nanyang. Regardless of, of which ones it was, we're having all three of those units uh, march here to where this headquarters is. Uh, let's see if there are part of that. So uh, the 55th is part of the second group army. The 77th is part of the second group army. Okay. This is the second group army. So we're going to get them all together here. And the 30th is also part of the second group army. So we have them all meeting up at this hex, which is hex 8547. That's great. So we've got no action on that. I think we can turn that second group army orange. They should not be moving. They are protecting uh, a breakout of the Japanese here, heading north towards Nanyang. Uh, so th uh, that headquarters and the units associated with, we're going to leave right on that highway and really try to dissuade the Japanese from moving north from there. Okay, uh, now we get to 8547, which is the 30th Chinese Corps. Oh, is this what we were just talking about? potentially. Uh, let's see, 8547 is not there. There's 8547. That's, or 
Oh, yep, sure enough. 8548. This is what I was looking for. That is the 30th Chinese core. We just talked about this. They're on the march. We'll have to keep them green uh, again. This is to remember to put them in combat mode when they get where we want them to get to. Uh, 8555, so now we start moving way down the map here as we go through Cole's rows. 8555 is going to be... It was right here. Now, what we're looking for is the 21st Chinese Corps. Let's see if this is the... Nope, that's the 49th. Let's see. Yes. Now, this is what we were talking about before when I was uh, saying, hey, we're going to leave that third new Chinese Corps here just south of Nanchang. Uh, and then we said, oh, we've got this other unit here. They must have marched here. Indeed, they did. It was the 21st Chinese Corps which moved uh, one hex north. We're going to set them to combat mode, and we're going to go ahead and turn them orange. They are uh, where they need to be, and we don't really plan on moving them. Now, if the Jap depending, that always depends on what the Japanese do, right? When I say we don't plan on it, that's because I'm not going to be moving them out of there unless uh, there's a good reason to. If there is a good reason to, we're going to come look at this hex anyway, uh, so we can then turn it back green on our spreadsheet if we need to. Uh, but for now, anyway, as I just go through the spreadsheet run of the setup, there's no reason to look at that unit again. They are where they need to be. And they're both on combat mode. Uh, you will see me with my OCD constantly go and check uh, these units to make sure they're in combat mode if they're next to Japanese units uh, because uh, like I said as Bayard and I talked about last time the last thing you want to ever do is have your combat units get caught out uh, in move mode when they get attacked it uh, is not pleasant uh, you take quite a bit more losses I don't know what the exact algorithm number is uh, for how that changes maybe Bayard knows uh, but it, it's severe. It's a severe penalty if they get attacked in a move mode. Uh, the next place we're going, so we've moved on to the next row, which is up at 86, uh, and it was 8641, which would be this hex, and that's the 61st Chinese Corps. Now, we are moving them. Uh, the question is, is where did we move them? We're trying to get them to 8841. Okay, so this is almost certainly them, and indeed it is the 61st Chinese Corps. They are moving uh, dead east to 8841. Looks like that's all set up correctly, so we are good there. We'll keep them green, of course, because they are not yet where we need them to be. Um, next, we have, let's see, two units, the 38th Chinese Corps and the 4th Group Army, that we are marching to Luoyang. They started out at 8642, and so let's go look. Uh, 8642, oh, well, there we go. We found the 38th Chinese Corps and the fourth, yeah, and the fourth group army. They indeed are marching towards Luoyang. Now we could see uh, from this uh, screen here and sometimes you may want to do that I get that the icons are small so if you want to see what's in a hex you can always click on the little you know box NATO symbol in the hex and see where they are now what's interesting is is both of uh, these units in the hex have Sin Kang as their uh, target now the fourth group army is going to Luoyang we'll probably need to change that uh, and then also we were talking about the 38th Chinese Corps now they do have their future objective or target if you would rather call it that at Luoyang so let's change actually this fourth group army uh, where their future target is because I don't see really why it wouldn't be Luoyang uh, we'll set that to Luoyang. All right. Uh, they are on the move. They are headed where they are supposed to be headed. Uh, so that all looks good. But we'll keep them green for the reasons I've talked about. Uh, they are not where they need to be just yet. Now at 8643 then, we have... Okay. We're looking for the 9th Chinese Corps. Are they still here? Yes, they are. Uh, the 9th Chinese Corps 
needs to be in move mode marching to Loyang. And this is why we do this. Sometimes uh, you haven't given something an order that you thought you gave it uh, an order. Uh, this would be a case where the 9th Chinese Corps, uh, we want to move that to Loyang to further buff it up that defense at Loyang. And so for whatever reason, I don't know, I just missed that one. Uh, we've already got the future objective at Loyang. I think maybe, a re well, no, I'm not going to try to come up with an excuse. I think I just missed that one, uh, and that's fine. Um, oh, cool. Oh, Stanley says, uh, nice quality today. Yeah, Stanley, if you joined a little bit late, I was talking with uh, uh, Bayard about that, is um, I, I went through every setting uh, on uh, Streamlabs, to make sure that we were optimized. I even watched a YouTube video myself to make sure that I had the best video settings that we possibly could for a stream. So hopefully we'll never have an issue again. I then uh, you know, went on my minute long, uh, my, my two minutes of hate against uh, Spectrum Cable. Uh, but be that as it may, it seems like it's holding up, you know, I, I shouldn't jinx myself like that, uh, but, but anyway, uh, let's get back to the spreadsheet. Uh, so that ninth Chinese core, we've now hopefully given it the proper orders. I'll go and recheck again. Um, hopefully, Shang Kai-shek will not be upset with me for not uh, getting the right orders in there. Future objective, Luoyang. It's on the move to Luoyang. That's great. It's part of the 14th group army. Is that at Luoyang? I bet it is. Yep, there's the 14th group army. Uh, sitting there perched at Luoyang. Uh, we really are building up big, big forces there. Uh, these are great places to build a defense at Chengchou and Luoyang. Now, you're always going to have supply problems in China. You just are. There's not enough supplies to go around, uh, but at least these units are on uh, or close to major highways or major railroad. Uh, I find that uh, they will get low on supply, just like most Chinese units will. Um, but they maybe have a little better chance than some of the units that are out in the hinterlands. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but be that as it may, you know, setting aside the supply problems that you always have in China, they're right behind this major river. And Cheng Chao, you are blocking the Japanese uh, for, from using this major railway to move supplies from north to south, uh, which is incredibly important. And as others have pointed out, if you play this just right in China, you can maybe, possibly, surround and pocket uh, quite a few Japanese troops uh, out here in the center part of China, where they've pushed out, they have a bulge. Uh, <laughs> hey, they have a bulge in the center part of China there, and it's possible possible to uh, you know pocket them if you get lucky. Um, all right, let's now move on and go down to the next unit. Uh, we just talked about the Ninth Ch Chinese Corps. They've got to stay green because they're on the move. Uh, we've got the 90th Chinese Corps now, which started at 8645. Uh, so where were we? Let's just click somewhere so we see it up here. Uh, so we need to go to 8645. 8645. Okay, you can tell this one's already moved a little bit here. This should be the 90th Chinese Corps that's on the move, and indeed it is. It is heading to Changchow. Now we have its future uh, objective as uh, Changchun. I'm gonna change that actually to Changchow. Um, so we'll have that as its future objective. We'll keep that green because it's on the move. Okay, now we go to 8647. And where are we? Okay, 86, 47, that's 85, there's 86. Okay, now this unit's in an interesting position, right? It's sitting right on that railway. Um, excuse me one second. Uh, it's sitting right on that railway, and it's kind of blocking the Japanese from moving north and east towards Changchow. 
Uh, and so you've got a few units here. You've actually got the 31st Group Army, you've got the 13th Chinese Corps, and the 29th Chinese Corps. Okay, and so the 29th Chinese Corps and the 31st, well, we, I don't see the 31st. We'll have to go find it here in a minute. Uh, the 29th, then, we had that as no action. Um, I don't really see a reason maybe to change that. It seems to be in a good spot. You, As I said, you're blocking the Japanese from moving northeast, and so that's a good thing, right? We, we don't want them getting around sort of behind us at Cheng Chow here. Uh, and so you want to block them from being able to move up and this way. Now we do, in many respects, kind of have them surrounded. And this is a, a fun game out here in the center of China. Maybe not so fun for the combatants, but it's, it's like, who has who surrounded, <laughs> right? They've got troops behind our troops here, uh, but we've got troops behind theirs here, uh, who can cut who off? Now, we're in a pretty decent spot. If you look here and you look at this situation, it's possible we could get down here, okay, and start... Now, we're moving these units up this way for now. We're getting them out of harm's way. That We don't have enough strength here. But eventually, like, take these units that are directly behind Xinyang, for instance, um, and directly behind uh, Hankou, we could potentially completely cut these three Japanese forces uh, off here. Uh, and so it's something to think about. 29th Chinese Corps is where we want it to be. Let's just make absolutely sure that the 29th, anyway, is in combat mode. It is. We have Xinyang uh, marked, or marked as its uh, objective, so right here. That all looks good. Let's uh, let's turn that orange. No reason that we need to do much with that, uh, hopefully, going forward. Now, we also had the 31st uh, Group Army Headquarters here, and we do. And we said for that not to move, and it's just sitting there. We'll turn that orange. That's great. Uh, then we have the 21st Group Army Headquarters that is two hexes south of here. Uh, and let's see, and there it is, indeed. We told that, again, do not move. Now, it's got its uh, future objective as Shanghai. That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I think that we should either make it Hankou or Xinyang, and we'll have to kind of decide what we're trying to do with these units down here. Are we going to try to surround the Japanese here? Are we just going to attack Xinyang and really put pressure on them? That's what I generally prefer to do, is take Xinyang here with all of these units that you have. Then you have Ai Cheng. You get Xinyang, which is on this major highway and this major railroad. Uh, it's a very nice location, and you really have these Japanese troops in a quandary here at Hankou, to the point they may even fall back. Um, the AI probably won't do that. A, a human player may, because you're really starting to put it under pressure that you could surround it. So let's go ahead and go to this 21st. Let's set its future objective to Xinyang. Uh, because I think we may go there, uh, but and uh, let's let's turn it orange for now because you know it's where it's supposed to be. We may eventually come up with kind of a bigger master plan for it, but right now it's where it's supposed to be. Now we're looking for the seventh and the eighty-fourth, which we. Uh, should have right here because we gave them no future orders. They are both keyed um, and have their future objective as Xinyang. That all looks good. We'll turn those orange. Um, they are where they need to be, and I always like that. Um, yeah, Bayard says he's got 75,000 Japanese troops surrounded at Kukang um, and possibly 100. And 15,000 more at 88.43. Yep, yep. Um, you know, you, there, there's the opportunity f for pockets. And that's what I'm saying. It's a real cat and mouse game of, you know, I've got you surrounded. No, I've got you surrounded. You know, who's surrounding who uh, out here against a really good um, human player? That just gets, it's a really fun part of the game. And uh, that's why I always say I wish that uh, Gary Grigsby would just come out with a land war game uh, that's very similar to this war in the Pacific uh, ground war 
and make it you know like worldwide or something or even or do like procedurally generated maps now he's never done anything like that uh and we'll probably never see anything thing like it but i think it'd be really cool to have it just the game generate maps with bases at different places different railroads different rivers and bodies of water uh on this system it'll never happen but uh, a man can dream can he not uh anyway okay back to the spreadsheet let's see where we are here we're actually going to be looking uh much further south to 8655 so about 250 miles to the south at the 23rd group headquarters now that's 8755 so uh 8655 it was here we're looking for the 23rd group army headquarters uh we told it to move to chusain or chusin Chusin. I don't, for some reason, I'm having a hard time pronouncing that one, or I just, I should look that one up, uh, because I'm absolutely sure it's not pronounced the way I'm saying it, but uh, Chusin, I'm going to say that. Um, oh, okay, so we're looking again for the 23rd Group Army. Uh, we, we said we wanted it to come here to Chusin, uh, down here, I should say. Is it already here? Nope, that's the Third War area. Okay, is it here? Yeah, this is it. 23rd Group Army, it's on the move uh, to Chusen as we told it to do. We need to set the future objective to Chusen, and that's why it's always good to go through these things. Uh, we also should have the 50th Chinese Corps in tow. It has the proper future objective. All of that looks good. We'll keep them green, though. They're on the move. All right, excellent. As we continue to move on here, we are going back north as we move on to column 87 on the map. Uh, so we are looking for 8741. Now these are interesting units out here. Uh, I don't know that I really, I, talk, I don't think I talked much about them in the setup. Uh, we're looking for the 43rd Chinese Corps and the 8th Group Army. Okay, they should maybe already be on marching somewhere. Uh, there they are. Yeah, they're just one uh, hex to the east. This is uh, the two we were looking for. We told them to go to 8841. They are now at 8841. Uh, what are we doing with these units? Well, that's a good question, actually. <laughs> it's, it's not apparent, really. Now, these, the 8th Group Army is part of the Jingsha War area. The Jingsha War area, you will find that headquarters out here in the middle of nowhere so, somewhere. Um, maybe, did we get them out yet? Nope, that's the 7th Group Army. That's not them. Uh, usually they're down in around here, that Jingsha. Well, we're going to have to go search for it now. So let's go look for the uh, Jingsha uh, Chinese, yes, war area, and see exactly where that is. Headquarters units, okay. It's going to be after all these numbers. I do know that. Gosh, look at all these Chinese. Oh, shoot, where is it? Was it up here somewhere? Five, six. Now I'm not going to be able to find it, am I? Second reserve. 20th. Oh, do they? Oh, sh huh. That's interesting. Uh, let's go back to all units for a minute. All right, we're on all units. They really should alphabetically be. I'm probably going to fly right by it here. Um, seventh War Area, Eighth War Area. There we go, the Jingsha War Area. Oh, it's at. Loi Ang. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it's up here at Loi Ang, and then we have these units that are up here in the mountains to the north. This is all mountainous territory here, and it makes very long movement times as you're trying to move these units around. Uh, you also have a very strong Japanese force here. Now, that Japanese force uh, looks like it's on the move to the east, uh, okay, uh, but you have this mountainous territory, and it's kind of like, what do you do with these units? Uh, so their war area, the Jingsha war area, is here at Luoyang. Um, okay, well, that kind of works. 
it's with its uh, group army, so that works. So the 8th group army, the 43rd and the 13th, so there's the 43rd. All right, well, it's kind of just sitting here protecting this minor railway and minor road from this big Japanese force. Again, this is one, you know, this kind of looks like a road to nowhere sort of, uh, but you don't want the Japanese to get down here and start, you know, threatening to get back and around you. So they can sit there. That's totally fine. We'll mark those orange and they are all good. Now, what was I thinking of? There is a headquarters unit that, oh, there it is, that always gets stuck out here. This is what I was thinking of. The Lusu War Area. It's just completely out here by itself, sort of. And I always have problems getting it out of here. It has to cross a river or a swamp. It can't go southwest uh, because you have Japanese force here. So you have to try to like get it back up here um, to its, you know, to your other Chinese forces. It's just a mess, but uh, it's not, it's not the one I was thinking of. This one is the Lusu. This was the, uh, what did I say? The Ching, oh, the Jing Cha, the Jing Cha. Okay, and so these units are connected to those. Um, 13th Chinese Corps was supposed to be at 8746. This is 8748, so it was here. 80, oh, this marched down to 8647 and joined these other units just to the northeast of Xinyang. So this should be the 13th. It is perfect. It's in move mode. We don't want that. We want it to go to combat mode now because we are just, uh, you know, one hex away from Japanese forces. It's where it should be. We will turn that orange. Uh, next, we go to 8748. Okay, fine. That will be one over and one down. There it is. Okay, these are the other units that are surrounding Xinyang. Uh, we have no action on those. It's the third group army and the 12th should be here. There's the 12th. It's in combat mode. Let's make sure. Okay, this is caught that. Actually, we'll be looking at the 85th here in a minute, but let's make sure we put it on combat mode uh, anyway, just so we don't forget. And this should be the third group army. It is. They are just to the east of Xinyang, helping form this pocket around Xinyang. And so uh, they are where they need to be. Uh, that's good. That's good. We'll eventually, I think, in this game, uh, in, in the next two, three weeks, maybe attack Xinyang and that will be a lot of fun. So let's mark those orange. They are where they need to be. We don't really need to look at them in the near future. Um, now we go to 8755. So we're going seven hexes or approximately 450 miles uh, to the south. Oh, that's not right. It's approximately 300 miles, 46 miles times seven. I can do math, I swear. It's a little more than 300 miles. 87.55, okay. Let's see if we're close. There's 86.54, 87.54, 87.55. And we're looking for the 28th Chinese Corps that we've divided into three, okay? So there's 28th Chinese A, 28th Chinese C, okay? So we have A and C still in this... Um, hex. We're taking A and going to 8754. All right, that looks good. We're taking C and going to 8854. That looks good. They're on the move. And we are taking B and marching it to 8855. Well, let's look for that. Um, it should be over here. And there it is, the 28th Chinese slash B core. So we've divided that into three, moved it different places. Looks like this is where it needs to be. It's the first one to arrive at its destination. We'll uh, go to combat mode on that uh, because it's it's where we want it. Um, and we'll also turn that part of it orange. And then we'll turn A and C green. Again, they're not where they need to be yet. Uh, they should probably get their next turn. All right, perfect. Turn those both green. Um, now we go to the 34th Chinese Corps. We have now jumped another column and we're up here again to 8841 is what we're looking for. 
So that should be approximately right there. 8841. 8841, this is the 40, or no, I'm sorry, the 34th Chinese core. We've got that on the move to 8940. Okay, so it may be up there, but let's go look. Uh, 34th, that's not the 34th, that's the 43rd. This should be the 34th, or it should be here. Uh, it is, indeed. Uh, it has moved to where we wanted it to move. Uh, we will put that in combat mode because of that. Now, what's this doing? This is another one of those units that's blocking. It's blocking here um, on the Japanese moving directly west down this uh, minor road, minor railway. Um, again, it's also sitting here in this mountainous region that I was talking about the last time we were up here. Uh, and it, it's protecting a little bit until you get these other units back to Yunnan. Uh, and so it's just sitting here. You know, it's sitting here. These other units to its southwest are just sitting here. Not a whole lot to do with them other than they're just blocking Japanese movement directly to the west. Uh, we may eventually you know, pull these back. We could even take them to Luoyang if Cyan, you know, if the Japanese want to go north and down towards Cyan, we may have to think about pulling them back. But for now, they're up in those mountains. They're well protected. Uh, they're doing what they should do. So that was the 34th. Uh, we'll turn that orange. We've now moved that to combat mode, so that's great. Next, we go to a couple of hexes south of there to 8843. That'll be the 98th uh, Chinese core. Let's see if they've moved at all. The 98th, the 98th. Um, oh, sorry. 8843. That's 8743. Okay. This was the unit that kind of got blasted out of here, the 98th. So you can see here there was a battle in this hex. Uh, at 8843. So they got knocked. Uh, they got hit pretty good here. The Japanese knocked us back. Now we had told them uh, to be in move mode and to march to Changsha. So again, this is the 98th. Let's see if they fell back this way, which I guess is possible. No. It looks like they maybe fell back to Changsha, and there they are. Uh, they are in move mode. Unfortunately, I think they got attacked in move mode. Uh, I'll have to remember that the next time I set up the game. Uh, you do not want that unit in move mode initially. Let's put it that way. You want to get it back to uh, Cheng Chao, and then you can deal with uh, you know what exactly you want to do with it. But this should be in combat mode. You know you can march it in combat mode, uh, and that's probably what we should have done. But they are where they need... Oh, wait a minute. Now, we're telling this to march to Changsha for the 98th. Let's go back down here for a second. Yeah, I don't like that. Now, it's part of the 39th Group Army. Hmm. Interesting. Now, you have certain units that Cole um, set up this way, where they're up here in the north, uh, or what is kind of oriented to the north, what we're dealing with. Um, I think most Chinese would consider this the central part of the country still. Uh, but up here in the north on the map that we're looking at now, he has some of these marching all the way back to Changsha uh, to just, you know, buff it up these defenses back here. Obviously, Changsha is so important. Uh, but I'm actually going to have them stay right here. Uh, I've got their, I've got it listed as Cheng Chao as their objective already. I'm just going to leave it there. And so the 98th is going to stay put here. Orange. I'm going to make a note uh, that they are in Cheng Chao. Stay in Cheng Chao. Okay. Now we will have to think about the fact that we are lessening the defense in Cheng. Shaw, since we're playing Cole's spreadsheet, of course, he's got things, you know, optimized his way. If that unit doesn't come south to Cheng Shaw, maybe we're leaving uh, Cheng Shaw a little under defended. Uh, it's just something to think about as we get down there. If you start doing derivations from the spreadsheet, you know, obviously he's thought all of these things through. Hey, I'm having this go to Cheng Shaw so I can have something else go here or there whatever you just want to make sure as you and and as the game goes on you're going to be doing more and more of your own stuff um 
And as you do that, you just have to think of what effect that'll have as you start, if you just go back to, you know, kind of mindlessly following the spreadsheet in other places, you may be throwing some balance off there. That's all I want to say. Um, all right, cool. Let's uh, move down here and look for the eighth new Chinese core at 88.45. So that was supposed to be here. And we had that going to 89.45, which is here. So this should be the eighth Chinese. This is a very, you know, this is not a very strong unit. It's got a 44 assault strength. Uh, it's got very little in it. Uh, this is one that you may think about putting replacements in because we've now moved it into a location here on the major railway running up here. Uh, that is, you know, supplying Japanese troops up here. We've now cut that off. Uh, we've gotten back into these hexes, um, and it's, but it's not with a very small or a very strong force. And so this is more, uh, think of it like in a Civil War, American Civil War game, if you've got Stonewall Jackson, you know, going behind the lines and trying to cut off supply, that's what we've done here. We've taken a very small force here, which is the, the core we're looking at, uh, you also have the 51st Chinese, which again is only a 44 assault strength, and the 69th, which is only a 47. So these are about the smallest Chinese core that you would ever find uh, on the map. We are moving them onto this major railway to try to cut off some supply coming this way anyway. Now they still have this major railway, uh, but you know it's just kind of running behind enemy lines a little bit, cutting off some s supply. Uh, good. Okay, it's where it should be. Let's go back to this 8945. They're still in move mode. Now we've put them where we want them. Uh, we'll move them to combat mode. And yeah, these guys I'll probably leave green. Uh, I want to monitor the situation. Since we're really almost doing like a supply raid, let's just leave that green for now. Um, the seventh new Chinese core is next. That was at 8847 originally okay it's not that 8846 8847 it must be this unit that's moving to the southeast and indeed we wanted to go to 8949 um so this should be the seventh it is the seventh we're moving it as i said to 8949 it's moved 10 of the 46 uh, miles it needs to it's in move mode we've got it set towards nanyang which is kind of interesting, uh, but okay, we'll just leave it uh, that for now. Uh, you know, this is kind of what, what we have set as its future objective. Now you may say, why are we moving this here? Well, it's really, I think, to protect the retreat coming out here. We're moving it down one um, and starting to move uh, a little bit, you know, tor towards this unit to get help get it out. What is this? This is the 89th. It's got almost no assault strength. The 89th is looking pretty poor uh, down here. It's just, there's no way it could be well supplied down here. Uh, and again, here's our Lusu war area that we're gonna try somehow to get out. It's gotta come up and around and who knows. Right now, we don't even have that marching. While I'm here, I'm just gonna set it to move mode and I'm going to tell it to come back to, you know, Nanyang. I mean, that's really the only place we can lead it to, right? Uh, now, it had Huayin as its uh, objective. One of these, Huayin, Nanking. There's Huayin. Okay, interesting. So this was set as its future objective. Sometimes you could look at those at the start of the game and see where the game thought these things should go they're not you know that's not a perfect answer right but you can kind of get an idea of where they're supposed to be by looking at their future objectives so anyway we've given it uh, this order to try to get back to nanyang now this has it marching to the northwest uh, do we really want it to go up this way what's it going up through the swamp uh, all right well if it gets through the swamp and can get on this you know uh, onto this fruited plane here, uh, it can move a little faster. Maybe we can get it out. I don't know. I always struggle with this. I feel like it gets attacked every turn. 
Um, you know, it's a, you know, you've got a big headquarters here and the Japanese evidently have a big red flag on it. So anyway, um, 8949, that's where it's supposed to be uh, talking about the seventh new Chinese core. We are going to leave that where it is. And with that, I think we've reached the hour mark. Uh, I actually have to, uh, you know, do real work uh, out in this world from time to time, even though I'd rather play this game the rest of the day, and that's what I'll be doing this evening, is setting the rest of this turn up. I'll go through the rest of China. Um, heck, who knows? I might even just turn the live stream on as I do it, although this does, of course, slow me down quite a bit. Uh, see you later, Stanley. Thanks for stopping by. I, I do appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I may turn it on. I may not. It does slow me down, and I need to get this set up. Uh, because we will reserve, uh, resolve this turn, the December 12th, 41 turn, which is turn five. We will be resolving that on Sunday during our live stream. So that will be Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific. I'll join you then, and we will go through. Hey, thanks a lot, Shaky. Hey, thanks for the uh, sub. You're number one. Like I said, I'll never forget that. Um, yeah, so on Sunday at 10 a.m. Pacific, we will resolve turn five. We'll watch it all play out. Um, that'll be a lot of fun. So hopefully I'll see you then. Uh, Till next time, Strategy Gaming Jojo, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Have a good one.